It was a very natural thing. But it goes right back to my fun fact. I actually think really good salespeople are, it's about solving a problem for somebody. There are many books that talk about solution selling or versions of that, like spin selling, etc. It's It's about being able to articulate and understand the client's problem and then articulate how whatever you're going to do is going to help them solve that problem. So I think it's the problem solving side. I'm also relatively gregarious, which is probably again, why I ended up in go to market stuff rather than sat behind a computer, because there's nothing more I enjoy actually working with people in person. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. I guess for me, there's, a, there's something in that determination to change things for people, the desire to solve problems. I, I think I actually genuinely believe that a really good salesperson, a natural, as, as most people would term, a natural salesperson, always comes at things where commercials are almost a secondary thought. It's not. It's a place of value and service, like genuine desire to solve the problems and issues for people. And the fact that money comes out the back end of that is just a, a side effect. And I always find like the people that are, Todd Capone says it really well, salespeople are coin operated, if that's the way you treat them. It boils down from the culture of yeah, business the... down to. I, I, I think it's also quite interesting because in that context, I've never viewed myself as being a great salesperson. Actually, I think I'm more a marketeer and actually the go-to-market strategy first and foremost, but I've also been very fortunate, which I've only ever sold what I genuinely think is the best at what it is and everything I've done. Now, some of that, if you pass it to inventing it, you're going to, you're going to think, I don't know. But I remember going back to that early career where we were launching innovative new equipment, I was bumping into the same sales guys and I was winning 80% of the time, which is great. And I was enjoying the bonus and it was all fantastic. But I actually remember, I still remember, don't know whether I don't know if Phil Thomas is still in the industry. If he does, here's a shout out. Is he, he, he was a better salesman guy than me because he beat me 20% of the time, but I got the best product by a long way. Yeah. So it's really interesting when I think about it when selling. It's the, so yeah, yeah, fortunate, made it that way, et cetera. I don't know. But I think there's, and that's possibly one of the tips to some of the SME owners that could be listening here is knowing when to go and hire a sales. In an early stage, non entrepreneurial business, being your own advocate, having that enthusiasm, knowing it inside out, et cetera, is really important to win those early adopters, those innovators, if anyone's familiar with, you know, crossing the chasm. That's the first part of launching a new product or service. Anyone not familiar with that expression, I recommend go get the book and read crossing the chasm. It's a really interesting insight into, you know, growing a business and turning mainstream. But there comes a point where you've got to know your own strengths and say, actually, what I need is I need a sales guy who is happy to literally just, you know, knock on the doors every day and do what it takes, takes to make this happen. So, yeah, that's one of the things is knowing what your skill is, being out, being the best person to close a deal isn't necessarily the best person to start a deal, for example. So, yeah, just recognizing where your strengths and weaknesses are. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's fair.